when you're making a game with guns, you'll most likely want to also include shotguns, since they are just so satisfying to use. To implement a shotgun, there are two things we need to consider. Firing multiple bullets at once and adding bullet spray so our bullets don't fly absolutely straight. Bullet spray is not only relevant for shotguns, but can also be implemented in a similar way for submachine guns and assault rifles, so this video will also be helpful if you want to implement that kind of weapon. The most common way of implementing the bullet spray is to just set a maximum angle and have the bullet fly off in a random direction in that cone. The higher you set the angle, the less accurate the shooting will be at long range, so this naturally makes shotguns strong at short range, but weaker at long range, since you are less likely to hit the enemy with multiple bullets. In the case of shotguns, you can also use predefined patterns instead of using random angles in a cone. Overwatch is an example using predefined patterns for most shotguns, However, for some characters, there is still some level of randomization within those patterns. Having a preset pattern is consistent and therefore allows experienced players to develop mastery around those patterns and might make your game more interesting. I will be going over the implementation of both methods in this video. I will be using Unreal Engine 5 again, but everything works just the same way in Unreal Engine 4, so just pick what you like better. Here we click the Games tab and select First Person. Since this will be a Blueprint project, select Blueprint. With the first person template, we already have a character that can jump, walk around and shoot bullets. However, the bullets don't behave quite the way we want them to. So open up the Blueprint for the bullets. There are multiple settings on the projectile movement component that we want to change. First of all, our bullets are kind of slow, so let's change this to 15,000. We also don't want our bullets to be affected by gravity, so let's change this to zero. And lastly, we don't want the bullets to bounce off of walls. This is already looking a lot better, but we want to make the projectile smaller as well, so open up the blueprint again. First we change the sphere radius to something smaller and then also change the static mesh to fit this collision. Now we can finally start working on our bullet spray. You could just put this in the first person character blueprint, but we're gonna put this into a blueprint function library just to keep it cleaner. Open it up and set a name for your function. We need to set two inputs for this function. The first one will be a vector with the muzzle direction. And the second one is a maximum angle as a float. The next node we need is random unit vector in cone in degrees. This will take our muzzle direction and angle and calculate a new shot direction within that angle for us. We then need to convert our return value to a rotator, pull off of it and make rot from x. Then create a return node. We can pass our rotator in here and change the name of it. We want this function to be callable without having to connect the exact line so make sure to check the pure property. Open up the first person character blueprint. In our shooting logic there are some nodes that are only needed for VR. Delete them so we won't get confused. Let's clean this up a little bit. This is where we decide the spawn rotation of our bullet. So let's call the function we created in our library and use the new rotation here. We can get the rotation of our muzzle here, however we have to get the forward vector of it and pass it to our function. We also need to pass the max angle, so create a new variable here.
compile and set it to 20 so it's going to be very noticeable. Then connect the new shot rotation to our make transform node. You can see here that our bullet spread is working and it's very strong since we set it to 20. Let's open up the blueprint again and set it to something more realistic like 2. We now have the kind of bullet spread you would have on an assault rifle or maybe a submachine gun. To turn this weapon into a shotgun the next thing we have to do is shoot multiple bullets at once. We create a new note which is a for loop. The nodes on the right will shoot our bullet, so we have to execute this on each loop body. We create a new variable with the shot amount, compile and set this to 3. Since our first index in the loop is 0, in this case we would shoot 4 bullets. We can either set the first index to 1 or subtract 1 from the shot amount and pass this as our last index. You can see that we are shooting multiple bullets now, however they just hit each other and stop right in their tracks. The issue lies with our collision settings, because we allow projectiles to collide with each other. Open up the projectile blueprint and select the collision component. Search for collision in the details. Extend the collision preset menu and set ignore for projectile. We now have a working shotgun that shoots 3 bullets at once with some bullet spread. In the next step I'll show you how to implement predefined patterns like they do in Overwatch. Create a variable for our fixed shot angles. This variable is a rotator array. Create a branch after we play our shoot sound and before our for loop. The condition for this branch is that the length of our shot angle array is 1 or higher. If this resolves to true, we use our new method of shooting. Otherwise, we resolve to false and use the method we implemented prior with the for loop. Let's clean this up a bit. To figure out the rotation for our fixed shot angles, we need to look at the muzzle of our gun. We can attach an arrow component here for visual help. Make it a little bit bigger too so it's easier to see. This will not be shown in the game but it's only for us to figure out the angles. You can now play around with the rotation values until you find the direction you want to shoot your first bullet at. In this case I decide to go for a roll of 0, yaw of 15 and pitch of 0. This will fire a bullet in upward direction. You can then right click your rotation and press on copy. Add a value to the array and set the first value to this. Now keep on doing this until you find another two angles that you like. You could add even more angles here to shoot more bullets at once. Go back to our event graph. We now use the fixed shot angles in a for each loop. Our shooting logic won't change much so we can copy paste the bottom part up here. We can get the shot angle for the current bullet from the for each loop. We then use the combine rotators node to combine this rotator with the one we get from get spray angle and pass this to make transform. The max angle variable we made prior will now work in combination with our predefined angles. To show off a perfect pattern we set this to zero for now. The pattern is pretty wide and unrealistic so make it a little bit tighter by changing the values of our rotators. If you set the max angle to something like 0.5, you see that it works on top of our patterns and adds some randomization. Just by changing the values of our fixed shot angles, we can now make a wide array of shotguns that all feel different from each other. To go back to our simple shotgun implementation, just delete the fixed shot angles and set a max angle. You can now easily switch between these two systems. 
This concludes the video. I hope you learned a thing or two about how shotguns work in games and see you in the next one.